Mr. President, I have come to the floor this afternoon um, unexpectedly. I had anticipated that I was going to be taking the long trek home for even a short weekend going back to Alaska. Uh, that is not the case this weekend, unfortunately. Our, our COVID numbers are, are at all-time highs, and most of the events and uh, meetings that I would have had back home are canceled. They're on Zoom, and so life is just a little bit different. You roll with it, and it means that I'm here in Washington, D.C. on this Friday afternoon. But I opened up the, the paper this morning, the Anchorage Daily News, our, our largest uh, statewide newspaper, to, again, headlines that have just kind of unfolded over these past weeks with more just grim and difficult news. The headline today is, Alaska infection rates remain high with over 1,200 new COVID cases. Um, we are leading, we're leading the nation right now in our COVID rates. And it's interesting, Alaska has, has we're, we're separated enough uh, geographically, but, but uh, through, through the, the advantages of air travel and, and road travel, um, we mix, we mingle, we get around, and, and the virus knows no bounds, as we all know. But as we're seeing, thankfully, the, uh, the case counts beginning to decline here in the, in the lower 48, Alaska is doing just the opposite. Uh, last, on average, and I'm quoting here from, from our paper, the U.S. saw a 26% decrease in cases over the last two weeks, while Alaska recorded an 84% increase. They go on to say, if Alaska were a country, it would be the nation with the world's highest per capita case rate. This is according to data from the Center for, for Systems Science and Engineering at Johns Hopkins University. The article proceeds to state that Alaska's 171 average daily cases per 100,000 over the last seven days is nearly double the rate seen in West Virginia, which is currently second in the nation. Uh, Bermuda and Serbia at the top of the global list have a case rate of 99. So we're at 171 average daily cases per 100,000. It has been challenging. We are a state that has, has limited capacity. Um, we've got a smaller population, obviously. But uh, that also means that we have, we have fewer hospitals. We have less limit, more limited means in terms of our ability to care for those who have become very, very sick. And it is straining. It is, it is really maxing out our hospitals to, to levels that um, we really just could not have even anticipated could, could happen. And as our hospitals are maxed out, it's not just the capacity, the number of people that you can uh, put into your ICU. It is those who are daily uh, doing the work of caring for those who are coming into our hospitals, coming in sicker and, and staying longer. We have, uh, we have maxed out our hospitals. And when I say maxing out, um, in the Alaska vernacular, basically that means there's no room at the hospital. Our largest hospitals, Providence, Alaska Regional, Matsu, uh, Alaska Native Medical Center, Fairbanks, Medical, uh, Fairbanks Memorial Hospital, Bartlett, they're at capacity within their ICUs. And let me share with you what it means to be at capacity in your ICU. And, and I'll share. I was at Alaska Regional just a weekend ago, and actually now two weekends ago, and I was told that their ICU, which is a 16-bed ICU, had been expanded to 20. 100% of the beds when I was there on that Saturday were occupied by COVID patients with no room for anyone else to come to that particular medical facility. I had been at Fairbanks Memorial Hospital, actually uh, there 
on an emergency, uh, not myself, but with uh, another individual, go to the emergency room. And as we were waiting for the doctors to come and address this non-COVID-related medical emergency, I was advised by the evening supervisor that Fairbanks Memorial Hospital was at capacity within their ICU. And what that meant was that because Fairbanks Memorial was at capacity, and as of that evening, all of the other hospitals in Alaska that could care in an ICU capacity were filled. And so I was told that my loved one may be in a situation if he needed to be in the ICU, that I needed to prepare myself and, my, and, and, and others that he may be sent to Seattle or Portland that night. For those of you that don't know your geography there, that is, that is a three, three and a half hour flight by jet. Um, would have been a medevac. It's thousands of miles away. That's what's happening in Alaska right now. When your hospitals are full, you just can't put them in an ambulance and take them to another town. We're taking these folks to another state. And again, keep in mind, the reason that I was there that evening with this individual was not COVID related, but that's the squeeze, that's the pressure that it puts on the rest of your system. We are uh, just this week, the state is, is dealing with crisis standards of care guidelines um, as it relates to, to how individuals may receive monoclonal antibody treatments because the supplies are scarce out there. So it's tough right now. It's tough. Beds are hard to find and the extraordinary men and women who every day are going in and doing as best they can to provide for the level of care that is needed are, are doing so. But they're tired. They're tired. They can't get enough help. You have, you have those who are exposed, who have to quarantine. It puts pressure on everybody else. People are running themselves to the ground. But we have good news that is happening. Um, our governor has been working to bring additional health workers in, and uh, we're starting to see just this week as many as, as many as we were hoping 500, but maybe a little bit less than that, uh, nurses, respiratory therapists are starting to come to the state as part of a federal contract. So you've got state contracted healthcare workers. Um, the Alaska Native Medical Center is going to be receiving additional support from a disaster medical assistance team. Again, we are at a point where you just can't take it on anymore, and our numbers have not yet peaked. Mr. President, I, I don't share these statistics. I don't share the front page of the Daily News um, just to bring people up to speed as to what is happening in Alaska. Uh, that wasn't necessarily my purpose here. My purpose this afternoon is in the midst of this, in the midst of this real crisis in my state when it comes to, to uh, the availability of, of health care and responding to this, this virus that is, that is killing killing Alaskans, killing Americans, killing people around the world, that we show a little kindness. Because right now, that seems to be in as limited capacity as some of the hospitals that we have in Alaska, is kindness and respect for where people are. Your health care workers are giving every ounce of what they have to be there, to leave their families, they're worried about everybody, but they are there for us. And they're doing the best job possible. And some of what we see in return is not the best of America. It's not the best that Alaskans have to offer. We have had some just horrible, horrible confrontations in, in our public meetings 
in Anchorage. The top of the fold in the Anchorage paper is, is about a, a, uh, an assembly meeting where individuals wore yellow stars of David to protest the mask ordinance that the Anchorage Assembly was, was taking up, comparing a mask mandate to the Holocaust. It's shocking. And at some of the assembly meetings, and it's not just in Anchorage, we're seeing it in other communities as well. It is neighbor against neighbor. We have had providers go to provide testimony before in these public meetings. And not only have they been ridiculed and mocked, but we, we hear the stories, we read the stories that they've been spit upon. This is not how we show appreciation for those who are trying their absolute best to be there for us. And they will literally turn the other cheek and make sure that the care that they are providing in that ICU, in that ER, is without discrimination as to whether or not you've been vaccinated or not. They're going to be there to take care of you. So please, can we please show some kindness to one another at these times of stress and of anxiety to families? We in Alaska are pretty hardy. We're independent. We can handle things on our own. But we're better because we're also good neighbors to one another, more often than not. When somebody's car breaks down by the side of the road, and it's cold and it's dark, we stop. We help them. We're there for them. When somebody's sick, we deliver the food. We're good neighbors. And so we in Alaska need to remember to be that good neighbor to one another. We can have disagreements. We can have differing points of view. We can express them without degrading one another, without denigrating one another, without humiliating and mocking one another. So I, I know that we will we'll be beyond COVID. It's not coming soon enough for any of us. But I just ask that as we go through this, in this state and around this country and around this world, that we remember that we are all better when we care for one another and we show a little kindness. With that, Mr. President, I yield the floor.